Hey guys, this is Chubbs, and today I'm going to be bringing you all a relatively short tutorial showing you how to create a simple day-night cycle similar to the one in my ZDoom RPG video that I uploaded years ago. So uh, before we get into the tutorial, I'm going to go ahead and show you all this little sample map that I've made for us. Uh, it just has three sectors, and if we go into uh, visual mode, you can see that we have a, a large outdoor area here and we have sort of like a, a lake or a large pond and then we have a, a a really small sort of indoor area that the player start is in so that's all we have here and we're not going to add anything else as far as map elements goes uh, what we do want to change however is uh, we want to select only the outdoor elements and we want to give them their very own tag and the reason for this is obviously the uh, day-night cycle. What we want to do is we want to have the outdoor elements with a specific tag and we want to uh, exclude any indoor uh, sectors. So anything that's indoors will not have this tag. So let's go ahead and let's select a large grassy area and let's also select that uh, lake or the pond. And with both of them selected in sector mode, let's right click and let's change the tag from zero to something else. Uh, we'll just make it 100 just for the heck of it. Click OK and there we go. So the outdoor areas that should be affected by the day-night cycle now have a tag of 100. Next we're going to go into the script editor. So go up here, click open script editor and this is going to be where we're going to be doing uh, most of our work from now on because this is going to rely heavily on scripting. So at the top of the script editor window, let's go ahead and type the usual line to, to kick things off. It'll be uh, the pound sign or number sign, include, space, and then inside uh, quotations, we're going to type zcommon.acs. And that will give us access to all of the important functions that we're going to need in order to uh, have the day-night stuff work. Um, let me also zoom in a little bit to make the text larger for you guys. That way it'll be easier for you to see the script uh, while you're watching the video. So uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start a brand new script. So we're just going to call it script 1. And we can do either an inner or an, an open script. Uh, both inner and open scripts run whenever the map first starts, like whenever you first load the map. Uh, I guess for this one we'll just do open but again we could also do enter and that would also work so let's do open let's uh, press enter and then let's do our opening and closing uh, braces and here's where we're going to start our very own little uh, day night cycle script and this is going to be a pretty short script and it's also going to be pretty simple and pretty easy to understand so the first thing that we want to do is we want to perform the fade tonight because it's already daytime outside so let's go ahead and let's do that fade so to uh, execute that we're going to use a, a, a very handy function called light underscore fade and all this function does is it takes a sector and it fades its light to a certain value uh, over a certain number of ticks so you can see I've typed light fade light underscore fade that is so now we're going to type uh, parentheses and inside these parentheses you can see that this function takes in uh, three parameters or arguments. The first one is going to be the tag and this will be the tag of the sector that, that it affects. Remember that when we uh, did our sector tags here we made the outdoor sectors 100. So 100 is what we're going to type, comma, space, Next is going to be the value. This is going to be the value it's going to fade to. Um, we're going to make it a, a fairly dark value. Um, let's say a, light, a lighting value of 112. That's, that's pretty dark. It's not like absolute pitch black, but it is fairly dark. So it's going to fade to that, and that'll be like our darkest night time. Comma, space, and then ticks. And this is the important part here, because this determines how long the transition is. Now uh, a tick is I think somewhere around like 1 35th of a second and so what you can do to make it easy to calculate it is you can type 35 times and then like however many seconds you want the cycle to be. 
Now, uh, since we're going to be demonstrating this for you guys, I'm going to make this a relatively low number. Um, let's say we want this cycle to occur over five seconds. That'll be a really fast day-night cycle, but we're going to do it. That way, you, uh, the demonstration video, you won't have to sit there forever to see what's happening. And then just go to the end here and do semicolon. So to recap, we have uh, entered in a light fade function. The tag of the sector that will be affected is 100. So all of these sectors with a tag of 100, which will be our outdoor sectors, will be affected by the fade. It will be fading to a value of 112, and that's going to be a dark value. And then this fade will occur over roughly 5 seconds. And we get that by multiplying 35 times 5 because, again, uh, a tick is somewhere around 135, 135th of a second. Next, what we want to do is we want to prepare for the, uh, the fade that goes back to daytime. Uh, and something that's very important here is that even though this fade is occurring over five seconds, any code that we enter after this is not going to be delayed. So uh, what we need to do is we need to delay this manually. And we're going to do that by typing delay just like we normally would. And let's delay this by the same amount of time that the fade will take. So we're just going to do the same thing. We're going to type 35 times 5. And this will ensure that anything that comes next will not happen until the fade is totally complete. So we're going to wait till the fade is finished, thanks to this delay. And then that's, where we're going to, that's when we're going to start our uh, daytime fade, where we go from night back to day. So first, uh, Let's go into sector mode and just highlight this. And down at the uh, in the lower left corner, the text is probably going to be hard for you guys to read on the YouTube video. But the brightness of these outdoor sectors is 208. That's going to be our daytime brightness that we're going to fade back to. So we're going to do basically the same thing, just sort of in reverse. So let's type light underscore fade. Uh, the tag's going to be the same because it's still going to be the outdoor sectors, comma. And this time, for the value, we're going to do 208. So we're not going to be fading to a dark value. Instead, we're, we're basically going to be brightening the outdoor areas until they get back to that daytime brightness. So comma, space. The duration will be the same for this, so 35 times 5, semicolon. And then let's do another delay. So delay, and we're going to just make sure that uh, whatever we type next will not happen until the uh, the daytime fade is totally complete. And what we want to have happen after the daytime fade is finished is we just want this script to just restart. And to do that, we just type restart. And make sure you put a semicolon after restart. And that's really all we have to do here. So you can see it's a pretty short script, pretty straightforward, pretty easy to understand. And we're just going to recap it here to uh, explain again what's going on. So when the script first executes, and remember it is an open script, so it executes when the player enters the map or opens the map. First of all, we do the light fade, and this fades to a value of 112, so all of the outdoor areas that we've tagged with 100 will fade to a, a dark value of 112 over about 5 seconds. Next, when that fade is complete, thanks to this delay, we're going to do another fade, except this time, instead of fading to a dark value of 112, we're going to fade to a bright value of 208. And that will also be over 5 seconds. And after that's finished, again, thanks to this delay that sort of helps the code wait, we're going to restart, and that will go right back to the uh, nighttime fade. So a, a short version of this is, we do a nighttime fade over five seconds, then we do a daytime fade over five seconds, and then we just restart so it goes back to the nighttime fade. So it creates an endless cycle or an endless loop. So let's go ahead and let's go up to this button here, the compile script button, and let's click it. And you can see it tells us here that the script compiled without errors. And now that we have finished our script, let's test the map. Let's see what we got.
All right, so as you can see, our day-night cycle worked just fine. Uh, it was a very short cycle because, again, we uh, we did set it to five seconds, and that's you know that's not a lot of time. If you're really doing this and you're wanting to take it seriously, you're probably going to want to set this to a relatively high value to you know to give day and night more time. Uh, you can also improve this by making some changes to the sky. Like if you notice there, the uh, during the cycle, the sky stayed the same brightness, and uh, that's sort of a tough problem to solve. But there are a few ways to go about it. Uh, one way would be like if you wanted to check what the brightness currently is, and uh, you know, like over several steps, uh, as the brightness hits certain values, you change the sky texture to like a a darker version of the same texture. It's sort of tough to describe, but you would basically just be swapping textures to darker versions and then lighter versions, and you would you would be doing that like as you checked the current light value. Again, you know, it's not an easy thing to do, but it is a possibility. Another way to do it would be to uh, create a sky box, and then over in the sky box itself, you could do the same exact fade code for it. So you could affect it with the fade, and since the sky box would be getting darker, then the sky itself would be uh, darker as well to the player. Uh, but I'm not going to cover sky boxes in this video. I think that'd be better for a separate tutorial. And I, I really didn't want to get too advanced or uh, to stray too far off topic with this video. I just wanted to keep it short and simple and really just do the same thing that you guys saw in my uh, Z Doom RPG video that I made a, a long time ago. But uh, I think that covers just about everything. If you guys have any questions about this or uh, need any, any help, just feel free and leave a comment below. And thanks for watching. And this is Chubb signing out.